Since first appearing on the street in 2021 to investigate the attack on Seb Franklin, DS Swain has questioned more than her fair share of Corrie characters in the Weatherfield Police Station interview room. But today, Vicky Myers has kindly agreed to come onto the podcast and have the tables turned on her as I interrogate her about the development of the character that we're about to start seeing a whole lot more of. Vicky, thank you for coming onto the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm not sure about the tables being turned, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will say that. So, yeah. thank you. so, just first off, congratulations on your promotion to series regular. Corey's had so many recurring characters over the years, including a handful of detectives, but it's rare for them to be granted main character status. Was this something you'd ever considered was going to happen? No, no, not at all. So um, it's been a very welcome surprise for me and one I'm very, very grateful for this this massive opportunity. But no, when I first started, I got the um, I got the offer for the tape through, which was uh, the prospect of eight episodes. Mm -hmm. And with it being such a hard hitting storyline with with the hate crime storyline. So um I really wanted to focus on what was in front of me and make sure that I did the best job that I possibly could with this character, but also ask, ask the questions of who is she, why is she a detective, and and all of the the prep really that you need to do um, when when you know you you offered a tape and for something such as Coronation Street, which um, this is a bit of a strange situation because I have been in it before. Yeah, I, I thought you had. You you had like one off yeah. roles, hadn't you? Yeah, very, very small roles. And it was really odd because I'd never actually met the casting team. So it was all just kind of happenstance, really. So this this was my shot to, if maybe not land Swain, to be seen by uh, by the casting team. So I just I wanted to do the best job that I possibly could, really. Um, mm. and then, you know, three years <laughs> later, here I am. Mm. And it's an odd thing because I didn't think that I'd done that. I thought I could have done a better job at the tape. Um, and I didn't hear after a couple of days and I thought, oh, no, um, you know, what could I have done better? And um, I, I was kind of a bit down in the mouth about it. And then my agent rang and said, you know, uh, Jenny sent an email to offer you the role of, of DS Swain. So, uh, yeah, I was I was elated. I was I was over the moon. Yeah. And and when the, the offer came for it to be a more permanent role, which was just announced last week in the media, was that a dis an easy decision for you to make? Oh, yeah, without 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 a doubt. Um, we'd had lots of different discussions and um, discussed different storylines. But Swain, for me, um, she really interests me and she keeps me challenged creatively and I know the storylines coming up that is that is going to do just that so it would have been a bit a bit stupid of me to to have turned it down and obviously it's one of the most if not the most iconic streets in the world and I mean to, to go there and you you've been there yourself Michael mm. and it's it is an absolute joy to be there everybody is so welcoming and so actually a lot of them are extremely funny um and very different to the characters that they portray so um and it's literally manchester i live in manchester right. yeah bit of a no-brainer really does it does it represent much of a change for you in terms of your day-to-day -day working life I, I don't really know how these things work um in, in what in what respect as in like in, yeah, in, even just things like you know, have you got a name on a dressing room now or you know <laughs> I have a pigeonhole with my name on. Um, I know. And uh, at the moment, I'm still in the guest artist dressing room because it's that transition of, you know, sort of people moving on and then the new people coming in. So, and there's there's a lot of cast. So mm. the cast uh, liaison, Caroline, who is who is absolutely lovely, she's really got a work cut out for her. So, but I'm, I'm not precious about things like that. The fact that I'm actually there and I'm playing a character that, really interests me and that, that I adore playing is um I mean ask me in a few months if I'm still in the dressing room and it's all different you know <laughs> when I've gone to prima donna status and I'm kind of don't you know who I am yeah. um <laughs> I can assure what, you that uh, one what's it going to mean in real terms for the viewers is it just a case that we're going to be seeing more of Swain showing up to investigate cases more than the other officers or are we actually going to be seeing more of you off duty for example like I don't know moving into one of the houses or or what's that going to look like for us yeah, we're, we're going to see um, a very different Swain, all being well. Um, mm. 
and that's something that I'm really looking forward to exploring and reading because at the moment it's a again that's a transition period so for me trying to navigate that as well um that's that's keeping me on my toes because it's also finding this this new character that the viewers haven't seen and i've done my backstory with her i've done my prep with her mm. and now it's my time to to portray that and to show the viewers who is this woman behind closed doors who is she as a mother what's she like as a mother mm. um does she take her a work home with her in this high pressured environment that that she surrounds herself in uh day to day from a job that she she adores that's why she's she's still doing it but i'm very much looking forward to that and for the viewers to see that um yeah have and you interested to hear what they make of it as well well it must have been nice to have seen the reaction that the news got last week from the fans when it was revealed you were becoming a regular i mean lots of curry fans have really taken to swain haven't they Oh yeah, they have, and um, that is it's it's greatly appreciated, and, it, and it's never taken for granted any of it. And you never quite know, especially with a a character such as Swain, because and and I know I've said this before, but it's um, she's Marmite. Mm. Uh, viewers love or loathe her, and I love that. Uh, that's that's pretty much exactly how I would feel if I was if I was watching Swain, um, especially in interviews um some of the curt remarks and sarcasm and uh, yeah um but it is it it's been wonderful um and to for people to have taken the time and to have invested in her and taken to it or not as the case may be but there's um there's numerous uh uh twitter handles and and podcasts um and fans of the show that have put montages together and little memes and things and they're hilarious so uh yeah i hope that there are many more opportunities for them to do that oh i'm sure there will be is that you, you said that you were kind of doing your prep work for swain back in back when you first started how much yeah how much of it was stuff that you were able to like make up for yourself like was it was your head canon about swain how much was it you were told and this is what she was like and, and have you had any say into what she's going to develop into in the future well initially um the, the, there wasn't really anything at all because obviously the focus it, it and i was very mindful of that because the focus was on the storyline mm. and obviously she was the investigating officer but it it's not about her but there were um, little nuggets in the script. And I thought, you know, this is a really serious storyline. So obviously with the hate crime storyline and, and there are things that need to be pushed here. It's uh, th There's lots of things that I did. I watched, um, you know, different um, police series and, you know, 24 hours in police custody and things like that, of which I find really intriguing. But also you've got to remember the genre of which um you know of, of which you that, that is being portrayed the show that it is so it has to be um heightened in that sense but also the seriousness of it so um but it's very much lends itself to the writing if it's not written then it it, it can't be done and as things have progressed there are it, it's been a bit easier for me because I thought oh she'd react like this and obviously working with with Tinker in particular with the Stephen Reed, um, Stephen Reed storyline, and when he had his secondment, um, <laughs> yeah, to, uh, I mean she would have been appalled, and it that's nothing against Tinker, that's against the system, um, mm. because you know he's been allowed to progress, and it's kind of I can only imagine from her perspective how hard she would have had to have worked, and then all of a sudden you know these opportunities are there, so that's not a personal issue with with tinker but also that he's sometimes inept um <laughs> he doesn't quite have the stomach for finding bodies in in um roof in canals in roof boxes <laughs> in canals um so it it does get easier for me but again it has to go to the writing um um the the storyliners and the writing team because if it's not there and like these um sarcastic lines and if it's not written I, I can't do it so it's, it's all down to them it's it's not really sort of my doing um they write this brilliant stuff and 
and the lucky one that gets to uh, that gets to betray you. So there was um, a funny bit towards the beginning of the year when you were investigating the um, the fire on the Bailey's yard, and uh, I guess Craig was said something, and the look that you gave him, like, "Oh, Craig," <laughs> it's like, it's like, "I just want to go home," kind of look. Yeah, it's um, it was a scene I remember doing that. Actually, I did it the other day for um, a little tiny clip on Big Brother, but um, which of course Colson Colson yeah. is in at the moment and doing extremely well. Yeah, do say so. yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's it's like no, actually, um, it can't wait. I need to talk to you. And as it turned out, he did the right thing. So yeah. he is getting better, um, which which is great. It would be it would be lovely to have more scenes with with Colson and to see Tinker improve mm. and get more confident. Even at the beginning of this week, when we had all the stuff in Lauren's flat and you're in your forensics gear and and all that, we got to see a lot more. I felt of the relationship between the two of you, and it was kind of you you teamed up for that. And and I guess that's you know now you're the a regular character. That's the kind of thing we might be able to see more of, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I think I think we should because obviously they work they work together. They work they work in the same police station. But um, yeah, that that was good, and it was great to it was great to film as well because that was sort of the light hearted banter between the two of them, and especially the Swain Rooney. Um, and yeah. I've <laughs> I've decided um, I've brought a little bit of myself into uh, into Swain that she's a blue, so that was quite offensive to her calling her Swain Rooney. Um, <laughs> So that was my choice. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if uh, if Ian and Verity are in agreement with that, but um, or Joe, but yeah, that that was very much my choice that I wanted her to uh, to be a blue. So mm. she but needs yeah, to get hopefully... talking to Steve McDonald, doesn't she? Because he, he's trying to decide this week whether to go reds or blues. Well, yeah, I was. It was interesting because I was listening to some of the podcast you were saying uh, about that. So yeah, perhaps perhaps she can influence Steve McDonald. Um, although I don't know if she'd be that welcome in. Uh, in the McDonald um, household oh, at the moment. No, they do have a bit by of with the laws as well, don't they? All of them. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there are many houses that, that Swain hasn't visited over the past sort of three years, so who knows? Okay. <laughs> you revealed in a press interview recently that Swain is gay and has a teenage yeah. daughter. This kind of Is this all new information that's been given to you now you become a regular character? Is this kind of fairly recent development for you? Well, it was established that she had a teenage daughter. Um, it was funny not talking about the McDonald's and the Barlows when um, it was the consensual sex storyline, and oh, there was, was a couple. There, of was it? Yeah, there was a couple of scenes, and I think it was after um, when Tracy was talking to Steve about her having a teenage daughter, and she said, "You know, she's all right. That's Wayne. Hmm. Some some fight has, has taken to her on the street." But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I. I had my thoughts about her being gay um, to start off with. And then this this has come about in storyline meetings and meetings with Ian. So I'm really pleased and it's a privilege to, to portray a character who is part of that community. And also, um, I don't know if, if this is something that they will explore, but what she has been through um, in in her profession, in her daily life, um, the the homophobia, the the barriers, the the fear. I think because a lot of it is is born from fear. Um, you know, they they kind of don't want to be associated because if they then come out and say, oh, you know, this because there's a lot of things that I've read that have have been written about. Um, them revealing that she is, uh, and I love the way the reveal, because she is a policewoman who is gay. Her yeah. sexuality doesn't define how oh. she investigates roles or anything like that. So, but also a woman of her generation as to what she's been through. Um, I think it's it's hugely important, and sadly, many people will will relate to it mm. from from the LGBTQ plus community. So that's something that I'm passionate about and really want to uh, want to explore. You said um, in another interview that she may have her eye on somebody. I, we're all trying to rack our brains, the Corey fans at the moment, because there's there's not. I don't think there's any other lesbian characters Swain's in Swain's age bracket. Now, I mean, there's there's Nina on the street. There's Asher. There's not many other people. So is this could this turn into like a an unrequited crush storyline or an age gap romance or or is it we're going to have to wait and see? 
I think you might have to wait and see about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows? And and also, I don't know if that will be explored because all I know is for now and for the foreseeable future is that she really does have her hands full with juggling work and home life and the introduction of a daughter because her daughter is feisty, um, sarcastic, opinionated. I I'd probably say that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree where, where that's concerned. Has she got so, a name yet? She does. I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal it, but I, I will. I will. Go on, um, Exclusive. Sorry. And exclusive. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so no sooner will I start than I'll be sacked. Um, uh, her name's Betsy. Nice. Betsy. Uh, we will, we will look out for more, for more for her soon. Um, yeah. Even if you can't tell us who Swain has got her eye on, could you say like what kind of person you think that she might be attracted to? Um. That's that's quite that's quite a tricky question, but I think it, in all seriousness, when when we've been discussing this and um, relationship wise for her, it's really more so about perhaps exploring her past and what has made her become the woman that she is today. Um, where has she been? What's happened in her her life mm. in Weatherfield? Um, where was she before that, perhaps? How has she managed to to be a single mother? Um, is there another mother mm. on the scene mm. somewhere? So I think that for now is where it's 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 going to be focused on. Um, and as far as her, what would be her type? I think she's. I think she's quite open to to love, actually, mm. and however. That appears. Um, because for a woman, as I've said, of her generation, um, that's really important. But also, why is she single? Um, why is she a single mother? Lots I to find unpack. that really interesting. Oh. So this is a whole lot to unpack with her. Sounds like there might be a dark secret in there somewhere, Vicky. Who knows? <laughs> so, <laughs> let's, get back to, let's get back to Amy's story, because I was really intrigued yeah. by Swain's reaction to Amy's protesting in the vigilanteism last autumn. I mean, she outright admitted to her that she thinks that the system is flawed when the likes of Mason can get away with being so vile to women. Do you think that she kind of tacitly approves of some of what Amy's been doing? And could we start to see more of Swain losing faith in the legal system? Does she approve? Well, probably not, because she's, she's a stickler for the law and she loves her job and she wants to keep her job and yeah. she's worked very hard to get to where she is. But I think perhaps, she, well, we know she turned a blind eye to a couple of things, in particular the vandalism on the police car. So I think that says everything you need to know with that. Yeah. And also um, for her to be so passionate in the interview room, which was being recorded, um Love she that. could have been reprimanded oh thank you um well you know Elle's just just brilliant and Claire who directed well um and it was it was her first time it was her first block on Coronation Street so so credit to her as well for taking that chance and she really did push us so it was great to be so free with it and to to go there because a lot of the interview scenes are um quite restrained because of that authenticity of trying to um, portray that and that it is recorded and it is um, it is official um, and part of the investigation. And also Swain has, you know, Swain has a boss. She has somebody to answer to. So there's only so far that she, she and she will push it. She will push those boundaries to get to where she wants to get. But with that, yeah, I think the connection with, um, with Amy Barlow she's already said that she's passionate about talking to young men um, about uh, the uh, abuse of, of women and violence against women in particular. So that's something that I wonder if we perhaps might explore in the future for her to have gone there and to have been so passionate and, and shown that. And then, like you said, losing faith in the system well, that's that's true. The system is flawed. 
um, we only have to listen to news reports. I'm talking in real life. We only have to listen to news reports, and that's that's a reflective uh, reflective of society at the moment and the situation, which again um, is terribly sad. Mm. Um, there's there's so, parallels with Billy losing faith in the Church of England last year as well. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that is so important to portray um, in the program because people can relate to it immediately. Um, in particular, you know, we're, we're talking about knife crime and so on and, and bullying and um, the, the current storyline, which is so being so brilliantly portrayed um, by everyone involved in that. And it's, it's fantastically written um, and really emotive. It's heartbreaking um, that I, I turned on the news this morning and there is yet another story about knife crime um yeah so the, and that's that's something that coronation street do really well so the 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 recent arrest that you're making this week or this week's arrest the big one roy cropper now come on <laughs> come on you're not going to be doing yourself many favors with the weatherfield residents with that one are you <laughs> Oh, I know. I've I've, I've read the uh, the episode, and I've literally it was, it was kind of it's a real sort of contrast of emotions. That oxymoron. I was like, oh, this is brilliant, and then I thought, oh no, oh no, actually, this this is Roy Roy the Roy Cropper. I mean, you know, it's somebody that I have watched for years, um, and my character's now going to potentially ruin his life. Um, but for Swain, well, the the evidence is is pretty incriminating. So um, yeah, it's it's for her. She has to build up this case against him. And again, this this goes down to the right in the way that they have slowly picked apart his life. Um, and almost exposes his, his vulnerabilities because he's so honest. Yeah. And it, it, I was thinking about this when I was reading the scenes and thought, wow, this this cynical side of people, could she's really questioning his his integrity? Mm. Is really that genuine? Um, is anybody really that genuine? And sort of, you know, come on, this is you need to tell me the truth because I can see straight through it. But having said that. There's evidence there that that backs up her theory and her gut instinct. So she's doing her job. And it's the seriousness of, of well, firstly, Lauren going missing and then this now escalating into a, a murder investigation. So, yeah, yeah. but no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think she'd be welcome in the Rovers, put it that way. Because we know that Roy really is <laughs> like that, don't we? Swain doesn't. We've we've known him for 25 odd years. He, he, oh, who would well, be to Swain? That's it, Mike. You hit the nail on the head there. She, but also, it's irrelevant to her whether people think he's a good guy or not, yeah. because she's there to deal with the facts and she has a case to solve. And also, she very much speaks on behalf of the victims. Um, that's that's the crux of it for her. She wants to be their voice, so she needs to get justice, and that's that's her job. And she takes it very seriously, perhaps a bit too seriously sometimes, but she, in, in cases like this, she takes it very seriously. And it's it then explores um, sort of accusations online and social media. And I, I was thinking about this when I first read the storyline um, and, you know, going back to the creepy cropper days and mm. people being unkind and saying not, particularly pleasant things about him and being so judgmental. And there was a case, it was um, Joanna Yates, and there was, um, I think he was a retired school teacher, and she she went missing, and was, sadly her body was found a couple of weeks later, but in the interim period, and that's not to, not to be dismissive of, of that, but I think there's around about 2010. Um, but in the interim period, they took... Um, this this retired school teacher and he wore cardigans he looked a bit eccentric um yeah. and uh perhaps sort of rebuked by society and the community and he was taken in for questioning and he was prime suspect number one and everybody had found him guilty yeah. um 
at this stage and then he was released and there was a, there was a, um, a program that was uh, I think it aired at, at, you know sort of five years later or, or what have you but I thought well that immediately sprung to mind with this for me um, yes yeah, it's, it's Chris Christopher Jeffries, I think, was his name, and then obviously later they they found uh, the murderer, and he's he's still in prison, I think. Um, but the damaging effect of people's accusations and that condemnation that they had found him guilty without without trial, um, or with a with a right to reply either, you know. Yeah. So it explores all of that and how harsh and cruel we can be as a society sometimes mm. well i mean weatherfield cops do have a bit of a tradition of arresting the wrong person first don't they so i'm sure we'll forgive you yeah. when it'll... i mean i'm, I'm presuming that roy hasn't killed lauren here i mean, <laughs> I mean who, who who knows you know? <laughs> you'll, you'll have to sit tight to find out who who knows but i think i think for now it's this this storyline in particular it's opened up so many talking points with people not just because it's Roy Cropper that that has that has been arrested or that Swain's involved there are so many other characters involved in this and oh yeah are still, you still there, still there. Oh, I've just had it oh 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 there you go you're back sorry about that um <laughs> it, me and technology honestly um mm -hmm. I think Swain will be far more proficient than I am um <laughs> Just so, imagine uh, in the interview room, just like, oh, the, the tape stopped. Oh, yeah, just, like, just, like, just hang on a minute. You were just about to confess. Just bear with me one second. <laughs> <back> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's with, as, as we saw last night with Daniel, picking apart his life mm. and um, his history with, with Nikki Wheatley and then Summer and uh, everything that, that that encompasses and to, to really prod and poke and sift apart people's lives, yet as a community, and I think irrelevant of whether this is done on Coronation Street, but I was also thinking about people in my community that they do things and you move on and you accept it, you move on and you move on and you move on. And then sometimes things are forgotten, um, which, which you know, is great because people do make mistakes, do um, error of judgment. But I think with this in particular, picking apart people's lives and seeing how they may turn after, decades of friendship and support um and love essentially because that's that's what it's about and see 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 what happens yeah. with this so the plot thickens I'm, as it I'm were. really excited to see how it's going it's been it's been great this week and that that scene in last night's when you were interviewing Daniel Gemma and I were both on the edge of our seats and and we were kind of hoping that you were going to meant he was he was going to mention the cardigan that he got the Nikki cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the cardigan um yeah no that's well, I mean, as you know, yeah, he, he, he seems suspicious, doesn't he? Again, I don't think he's done it, but he, he, the evidence is there. So as, as the detective, you got to go down that route. Yeah, or is, is perhaps that are they some way both involved? Who knows? Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? <laughs> Who knows? Time will tell. Are we, we going to see now you're more of a main character, more of the investigative bits where we see you kind of putting the pieces together because often with the detectives or any any police officers on Corrie we kind of see them show up at someone's house arrest them question them and that's almost it so are we going to see more of what goes on before that do you think um possibly I can't, I can't answer that truthfully because uh, I'm I'm not so sure um with that I, I would I would think so but I think for the foreseeable future they're very much focusing on the view is getting to know Swain and uh, Swain and her daughter because I feel that that's important. With there, there's a we've seen Swain an awful lot um, in the interview room and how she conducts herself. Um, so I feel that it's important at this stage now to to see the other side of her. You know, what is she like as a mother? Is she still the same? Is she softer? Um, and again, how she's ended up in this position, how she's ended up as a, as a single mom and what she's done in that period of time. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's really interesting and exciting. You're racking up quite a list of stories that you've been involved in now. There was Seb's murder, obviously, Imran's death, Amy's rape, Stephen's murder spree. Have you got any favourite stories or moments that have particularly stood out to you over, for, over the years? Oh, crikey. Um... Favorite moments, I, th I think, and this um, this is probably not going to be what what um, 
what the viewers would agree with but i really think that it would have to be the way she is with the the battersby's mm -hmm. um in particular working with jane danson and there was a scene um i think it, it went all over the show because he did a thug life um a thug life meme if is that is that what it's called i'll have to ask my daughter what that is because she's more au fait with the with the terminology but <laughs> um yeah the uh oh just just wait there while i go and find the key and she's like my daughter's in uh, my daughter my sister's innocent um so yeah i i really loved doing that and the fact that they allowed us to just play with that and yeah. keep the soccer there. but again I, I keep reiterating this it is down to the writing because if, if that's not written then that would never have been a thing with her no um, i love the but bit I, I i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed doing that with her I love the bit with Toya. It was after um, the the spider and Toya hostage scene, and you say, "What is it? You like, you managed to keep this one alive, Mrs. Habib." Or... Yeah, ah, Mrs. Habib, you managed <laughs> to keep this one alive. Yeah, it's it's great, and it's great to play a character like that. And I've not I've not played a character like her before, hmm. so um, I'm I'm embracing it with with open arms because the characters that have played before have been. Um, have kind of they've shown the vulnerabilities there with Swain. She doesn't, but you know she she is she is broken. Um, anybody that has that projects this harsh exterior the way that she does, this it's a protective mechanism. So that's what I'm really interested to to pick her way out and learn more about myself. So this is this is as exciting for me as it is as it is for you guys. Yeah, Go, going yeah. back to, to Toya, I'm just kind of wondering. Is there is there unfinished his like unfinished business there? Does does Swain consider her the one who got away? You know, she she is she's killed him, ran, she's walking away free with it. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it really comes to, until she sees her. Mm. I think that that would just be. But that's gone. She's she's like moving on. But she's she's you know she's definitely still in a radar in that sense. That yeah. well. You know, I know that you know that you know that I know, kind of thing. Yeah. But she's she's got other things, and obviously we've had the the Stephen Reed, um, mm -hmm. you know, with his reign of terror. I think that is probably something that grates more than anything: the fact that she couldn't bring him down. Yeah, um, I and going to Manchester Airport. Um, uh, yeah, yeah I run. read that. Like, really? Would she? Would she? <laughs> um, but yeah. And then obviously with uh, with Peter and um, kind of getting there before she had an opportunity to arrest him. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the fabulous. Uh, are, there, are there any like Cory villains from the past that you would have liked to have arrested had you had been in the show back then? Oh, crikey, what a question! I think there are a fair few that are still in the street that she would like to arrest. Actually, the the, the crimes that have been ongoing since before her time. But <laughs> uh, oh, let me think about. Uh, probably Jeff Metcalf, I think. Nice. Yeah. He was a wrong yeah, man, wasn't he? Yeah, and also, um, I mean, I know he met his demise, but um, I think the coercive control storyline in particular interests me, and I, I'm pretty certain it would interest Swain in that, because with physical abuse, obviously you can you can see that, sometimes sometimes it's hidden but with coercive control and um the mental abuse these are it it's there forever and our minds are very powerful tools and to um to ridicule and diminish somebody and to um obviously break down the confidence and to that storyline with with yasmin it was it was heartbreaking and they allowed it to breathe and it was relatable to so many, not not just women, it was relatable to so many people that it raised awareness, but it also gave them an opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and it took away that fear aspect and um, the self-consciousness because they'd perhaps been um, sort of reduced to somebody less than their the former self. Um, so for that, yeah, yeah. I wish I, I wish I wish Wayne had got her hands on him. Absolutely. Too, and justice was served. Few too many <laughs> of the big villains end up kind of meeting their maker before they uh, 
probably get probably get to serve justice, don't they? Face justice. That's yeah, the I know. Though. So, so I wonder what's going to happen with this storyline. So, I'm desperately hoping that that's um, that's not going to happen with this one. But who, who knows? I'm I'm very much looking forward to uh, to seeing whether that comes true or not. Well, anyway, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast, Vicky. It's and, and congratulations again on being a regular. Just before we go, could you tell me like? one hope that you have for Swain over the next 12 months now now you're going to be able to see sink uh, your teeth into her what, what's one goal you'd like to achieve with her over the next year um to see her laugh <laughs> and have fun wow. that that's 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 a name that I would I would you know I would, I would like to uh, achieve very much so um and to to portray her with authenticity and truth yeah. because that's that's my job and as I've said I love I love playing her and I'm really excited for what's to come so I've uh I've made a deal with myself that I'm obviously going to do the best job that I possibly can um so yeah fantastic well thank you again it's been lovely speaking to you thank you thank you bye-bye bye take care bye <laughs>